The answer is simple, 355 days. How? Let me explain. Take a ball, cut it in half and you get the flat earth doom. Around 50 kilometers above it, there is a floating sun that moves like a flashlight, lighting up only some parts of the world. That's where day and night came from, according to that flat earther's idea. Water doesn't fall, doesn't fall off the edge because the whole disk is surrounded by a giant ice walls. Simple, right? Not really. Flat earther's world has holes. A lot of holes. First is gravity. In flat earth logic, it can work in two different ways. Option one, the space elevator. The entire doom moves upward with an acceleration of around 10 meters per second squared from the beginning of the universe until now. That's supposed to create the feeling of gravity pulling us down. So what speed would this doom reach after, I don't know, 24 hours? About 847,000 meters per second. And speed of light after 355 days. And that's exactly the moment where the whole model collapses, because the speed of light is the maximum speed for particles without mass, like photons, for example, the particles of light. Objects with mass, like me or you, cannot reach that speed. When they get close to even a fraction of light speed, their mass increases, their length contracts, and time slows down around them. And if this model really exists, we beat it in one year. Oh, and of course there is option number two. Take normal gravity, the one that works on around Earth, and try to put it on on a disk. To understand how absurd that becomes, we need to think about what creates the shape of a planet. Gravity works in two directions. One is local, that keeps our weight perpendicular to, to the ground. And one central. The stronger it is, the more it bends space around the planet. And all lines of that gravitational field point toward the center of mass. That's why planets naturally become spheres, not dinosaurs, for example, or other shapes. Each planet, each part of the planet, wants to be as close as possible to the center, with the least gravitational energy, of course. And the only shape that allows that is a sphere. So in real physics, a disk would simply collapse into a sphere. Sorry, flat earthers. But okay, if you still believe the Earth is flat and you want to imagine a day on such a planet, let's continue. From art class, you probably know something called a horizon. It's the line beyond which you can see the sun. Depending on where you stand, the sun rises from behind that line in the morning, and after a few or several hours, it sets behind that line again. And at night, we don't see the sun because we are on the darker side of our planet, where the moon rules, rules the sky. The moon that reflects sunlight back, back to us. But how would that look on, on a flat earth? Oh my god, it's terrible. Let's make a small experiment. I have an imaginary flashlight here. When I point it at one side, we have day on the flat earth. And now I move a bit to the side to show you night. And as you can see, the sun would still be visible all the time. The whole bright areas would also stay visible. There would be no place on the disk where the sun actually disappears behind the horizon. And in this model, the moon would have to work on some kind of batteries. It could not shine with reflected sunlight like in real life. It could, or it would, need its own light, light source. So maybe I need to charge some batteries. Moreover, on a flat Earth, there would also be no magnetic field. The magnetic field of our planet is created by liquid iron moving inside Earth's core. These motions create electric currents and those current create the magnetic field that protect us from, from something called the solar wind. And the solar wind is a stream of plasma coming from the sun. On 
real earth. One of its effects are the beautiful auroras, which appear in places where the magnetic field is the weakest, like North Pole, for example. But without a magnetic field on a flat earth, the solar wind would hit the surface directly. The ground would start to look a lot like the surface of a Mars, dry, damaged and without protection. And because there is no magnetic field, compasses would not work. Birds also use something like building compass in their heads to know where to fly during migration and on a flat earth, birds would literally not know which way to go. Something like warm countries would be completely or serious mystery. There would also be no seasons. A disc could not tilt the way a sphere does. To have springs, summers, autumns and winters, the planet needs an axial tilt. A flat disc simply cannot produce the same effect without breaking its entire geometry. And if the disc moves upward like an elevator, strange forces would twist and bend it, making the whole structure unstable. But okay. Even if after these five, six arguments, you still believe in flat earth, prove it in the comment section. Maybe I'll make a part two and subscribe.